very very good evening friends this is rahul magan here as a group chief executive officer treasury consulting and also on the capitals you understand that i serve as a corporate treasurer of us and indian companies so i dealt with the treasury function reuters bloomberg interbank non deliverable and all and i was lucky that i saw almost four recessions 2008 2012 2013 and now 2020 to be honest i don't think that effective 2008 any any year passed when the world not saw any sort of recession that's a separate thing that people here disregard because they know that if they do not disregard they are unstable in nature while the many media while the many i would say the cinematic industries of multiple countries are busy they were they were busy in shooting the romantic and action movies while the hollywood shot very great movies like based upon the financial crisis financial crimes like margin call big shots house of cards and so many great movies let us be honest and one of the great movies my favorite is the margin call actually this is not a movie this is a realistic uh i would say a kind of documentary which is which is based on how the lehman collapsed in this i'll tell you in short that in 2008 when the world financial crisis just started the bank started cutting the job you know how bank works when there is a boom bank hire people when there is a recession bank cut people this is literally how the bank works the point is at that at that say as per the movie at that point of time the senior boss of risk management asked to step down and before he was quitting he handed over a kind of pen drive to his junior and he said that be careful well to be honest that i have seen many bankers and all these bankers are not competent enough to handle their role but to be honest this senior person really a competent person in that regards his junior was also very competent he rather than spending the nights in bars and discos he analyzed the whole information block by block in our finance we call this block by block he analyzed this information block by block and finally he concluded that oh my god there is a big nuclear bomb which is coming and what exactly he did with that nuclear bomb is that he analyzed that nuclear bomb and he handed over that nuclear bomb to uh his risk committee which is risk committee plus allco the head of bank also played mr tuld as per the movie played a very great role because rather than acknowledging that the mess happened irrespective of the fact that he was the ce he is the ceo he simply he simply let the blame on the others and started to wind up the trades at the last of the movie there is a scene that how the front office of the big banks working i'm sorry i don't have any copyright else i would have shown this in my movie but i request you before watching the the complete or maybe after watching this complete uh, video you should please download the margin call or if not download the margin call please see on the netflix i think it is available on netflix and amazon prime also i have seen uh, because i have seen this on netflix but i'm sure it is on netflix but uh, i think it is on amazon prime also you should try both please see the last uh, 10 15 minute section and you will see that how the treasury or the front office department of the big banks are actually working and you would be very surprised that the realistic front offices are completely 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 depend uh, you know different than how you feel that it is working in the bank it is working in the books and all i wish you all the best please see this movie or maybe after watching this whole youtube video you can see this movie on netflix you will get a very good example have a great time friends very 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 good evening friends before i start the video let me make one thing very clear that we have taken a very small screenshot from one of my favorite hollywood movies which is known as margin call having said that there are very less quantity of 
Hollywood movies being shoot, which covers the financial crisis in detail. But my favorite movie is definitely The Margin Call because in this, a lot of how the bank is actually working is shown. Having said that, when it comes to Hollywood, there are variety of movies being shown like The Big Shot and so on and so forth. Like there are some series also like House of Cards and all. More or less everyone is trying to project one thing which is that the banks are running recklessly across the globe. Many people feel that in 2020 the banks are highly regulated in nature but to be very honest the situation is more or less the same what it was in 2008. It is, I, I really don't think that it has changed a bit to be honest. So this screenshot, uh, basically a small uh, you know, video which we have taken is only to demonstrate the people that how the front office of the top banks works. Many people do variety, variety and thousands of types of degrees to be in, to be act as a corporate treasurer in the globe. Having said that, not many people ended up being as a corporate treasurer. In fact, when I speak about so many degrees, then I, I doubt that hardly 0.01% of the people across the globe end up being as a corporate treasurer. The reason is that majority of the times we only chasing the degrees and the certificates. We do not change the we do not chase the knowledge, and until otherwise we do not change the chase the knowledge, we will never reach where we want it to be. And at the end of the video, I will give you a news about strategic changes which is happening in the world of treasury. Now guys, treasury is basically divided into the four functions. Number one is definitely the front office, the middle office, the risk office and the back office. Front office is the most important function as it faces the financial markets. Middle office is a function which is facing the existing regulatory. I have made very clear number of times and most of the people in fact still is not aware of the fact that it is the middle office who, who is actually chasing the existing regulatory to be very honest. And then comes the risk office. Risk office is the office which is come doing the permutations and combinations of the upcoming regulatory example the LIBO transition example fundamental review of trading book example the changes to be happen in RFR risk-free reference rate and there are a variety of regulations which we have according to our statistics after every minute after every seven minutes there is a new regulatory coming up in this world but the unfortunate part is that even if after seven minutes the new regulatory is, is coming, but the unfortunate part is that even if after seven minutes a new regulatory is coming, then there are hell lot of issues in the banks. We have recently saw what had happened in variety of banks in Argentina and different parts of the globe. We saw what had happened in the wire card and the list is very long. So risk office is actually a office which covers the prospective regulatory. Now to be to able to cover the prospective regulatory, you need to understand regulatory very well. And majority of the times people do not understand regulatory very well. And this is the reason they pay a heavy price of that. Because banks miscalculate, when banks miscalculate, they take wrong positions and when they take wrong positions they bound to lose fourth is the back office and to be precise and honest the back office is history now because in majority of the banks back office is replaced by artificial intelligence machine learning and variety of other applications we left hardly any bank who has not implemented the you know the technology in fact according to bloomberg in variety of public sources, the US banks spend several billion dollars in the technological piece. And this is the most effective marriage in US parlance. We call this marriage 
this is the most effective marriage which you know the US banks are actually doing whereby they are investing a very huge amount of money in terms of technology and the more money US bank would be investing the more job cuts would happen in the back office in fact in front office also and at the end of the video we will let you know how how much of the job cuts already been done so to conclude that treasury is divided into four parts which is front office which is definitely most important second is the risk office third is the middle office and fourth is the back office Apparently speaking, the big banks of the globe are covering these asset classes, which includes FI four times CST. FI means fixed income. C means currencies. Another C means commodities. The second last is crypto derivatives. Then C means credit derivatives. Then S means structured derivatives. We need to understand one thing very clear that this is a big world of treasury and you cannot have a single front office in the whole globe whereby one person can cover everything. The American banks and the European banks have dedicated front office people covering all asset classes. We call them as asset class like fixed income is an asset class, currencies is an asset class, commodities is an asset class, crypto derivative is an asset class, credit derivative is an asset class and structure derivative is an asset class. These asset classes are further divided into two parts which is known as deliverable and which is known as non-deliverable. As we speak around 189 currencies of the globe which is 189 and 24 are non-deliverable currencies. You would be surprised to know that how commodities, how fixed income can be deliverable and non-deliverable. That's a very good question. Example, if Goldman Sachs is making some product in INR and the final conclusion to be happen in US dollar which is technically known as the quanto products then INR is a non-deliverable currency which means it's a non-deliverable equity products. Why example Goldman is making some product in Swiss franc then dollar to Swiss franc Swiss franc is a deliverable currency so so this comes under deliverable. As we speak today Goldman said that they are looking forward to entry in crypto market. I don't think this is the first time Goldman said this. JP Morgan, Goldman and variety of American banks have expressed their opinions about the crypto market. That's a separate thing that few American banks turned hostile compared to their earlier opinions. You understand which bank I'm talking about but I'm sure that the way markets are moving in crypto sooner or later all American banks needs to go ahead in the crypto market and they are supposed to be because if they do not they would be losing a huge chunk of the business as simple as that. So asset classes are divided into these part FI stands for fixed income first C is commodity currencies another C is commodities then the crypto derivatives then C is the credit derivative then S means the structured derivative. Let's move further. Now guys you know the G7 banks in the world they are you know they have divided themselves like this that they have divided themselves the front office into multiple reasons example ANZ stands for Australia New Zealand Japan is included in that Singapore includes Singapore India Thailand Philippines Hong Kong Malaysia Indonesia and different all basically Southeast Asia reason so one is ANZ which is Australia New Zealand plus Japan Another is Singapore, India, Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, Hong Kong, Dubai, Malaysia, all the Southeast Asia region is covered by this desk. Then is the European Union which covers London, Scotland, say Denmark, Sweden, 
you know, Germany, Italy, Ireland, Greece, basically the whole European Union, because more or less one hour, two hours here, there, European Union opens at that point of time. Then we have US, which is East Coast, West Coast, and so many time zones. Many people feel that, example, you are a corporate, you are working in any corporate, and you are calling the treasury department of any bank. The person who picks up the, the call, you feel that he is a trader. No, guys, that is absolutely incorrect. He is a sales desk people. The first layer who represent the market is the sales desk people. They might or might not be extremely capable in nature. But yes, they understand. This sales desk, example, I am calling to JP Morgan. Hey guys, uh, this is Rahul from Treasury Consulting. Hey, hi, hi Rohit, how are you? So I need to sell $1 million and uh, I need to book a one year forward contract. So how much price are you giving to me? Okay, uh, how much price you're giving to me? You want me to check the screen? Okay, give me a minute. Let me check the screen guys. Give me a minute Rohit. Now Rohit asked me to check the screen and that is what I did. I check, I check with Rohit, I say, hey Rohit, the one year forward contract is Hey Rohit, so this is Rahul here. So what rate are you giving to me Rohit? Okay, so one year forward premium is coming at 3 rupee 45. I wanted to sell, it means I will get 3 rupee 45. Okay, so what exactly happens to whom I'm speaking? It's just a dummy character I have made. You know, uh, his name is Rohit. So he would be taking my call. I feel that he's a trader. No, he is not a trader. He will give call to his trader. He will say, hey, hey, hey mate hey manish uh, i have a client treasury consulting he wanted to sell 1 million us dollars i have quoted him 3 to be 43 pesa and he's saying 345 now manish will take a position in the interbank market the whatever rate he will get he will give 1 pesa or 2 pesa lesser which is actually the the margin of the bank and that is really very important to understand majority of the trades which are happening in the market they are happening without Reuters and people don't understand example the screen which you are which you currently looking at another biggest issue is that the big companies like top companies they directly speak with the trader so what they do example I work in a very big organization I stayed call to hey Manish what's up guy uh, I need to sell 1 million first of all the big companies don't sell 1 million 2 million they sell huge I need to sell 400 million dollars it's around 346 I want what is 346? 345 plus 347, which is called mid. More rest details we have shared in other in our courses. They get a mid call. We tend to feel that to whom I called actually, he is a, you know, he is a trader. No, he is a sales guy. That's very important to understand. And this is how the screen works. So guys, you know, let me reschedule the camera. Okay. Similarly, it's a non-deliverable and the non-deliverable market is really, 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 really big market. Okay, let's move further. Now, the sales people, example, like the people who are working in the sales department of the Goldman, uh, of course, they are competent people, but they may or might not be as competent as we have traders. But they are the real face of the bank. Example, they face corporates, they face NBFCs, they face hedge funds, pension funds, alternate investment desk and all. Basically, the purpose of the salespeople is to, is to have as maximum as meetings as possible, to arrange the call with the customer, make customer happy, to do the reporting and to maintain a good relationship with the customer so that customer do not run away. We have a lot of banks in the world, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Lehman Brothers, uh, Morgan Stanley, DB, Standard Chartered, HSBC, Barclays, ANZ, and what not. According to an estimate, the world is having around, if we take mid to large banks, it's around 5,000 banks we have. And world is having around 15,000 plus different financial institutions, which includes private equity, venture capitalists, alternate investment funds, and so on and so forth. 
this is just a guess the real you know the exact an exact count is not known to anyone so you know it's around 15,000 to 20,000 financial institutions and all financial institutions love to have basically the sales office let's move further now let's talk fixed income first of all this list is not comprehensive fixed income covers equities credit notes, credit link notes, dividend swaps, equity link notes, equity swaps, high yield bonds, structured equities, bonds, index options, swaps and what not. This is not a comprehensive list but let me tell you in the world we speak we have this many equity derivatives. This many. It is impossible for a human being to understand all of them. This is the total equity derivatives we have across the globe, which includes the participation notes, non-participation notes, and whatnot. Then it comes to currencies. Again, the list is not comprehensive. We have forward contract, we have option contracts, we have swaps, we have deliverable contracts, we have IRS, we have OIS. I will show you around, guys. A few things I, I will show you. Like example, let me go back to my Reuters screen and let me just change the camera way. Okay, now I will show you exactly few example GBP forward, Euro forward, JPY forward, Swiss franc forward. And by the way, the list is very long. Example, INR interest rupee swap, IRS, which I gave, USD IRS, right, GBP IRS, and the list is very long. Example, USD FRA, USD forward rate agreements, example, you know, I'm not taking other FRAs in the interest of time. USD OIS. Example, GBP OIS. Example, Euro OIS. Whatever I mention, it is a very small part of the foreign exchange market. According to Bank of International Settlement, which is the global regulator, which is BIS, which is Bank for International Settlement, Every day, only spot, forward, and option. Only spot, forward, and option is around 6.5 trillion. And this is the trial survey they conducted in 2019, which precisely means that when they would once again conduct after three years in 2022, to be honest, then they would be having around, I think this 6.3 trillion might be, 6.5 might be 7. I don't think seven it would be eight it might be nine I remember the trial survey before this which was done in 2016 is having five trillion number now it is 6.5 I'm sure that next year it next survey it would be at least eight trillion maybe more now what happens guys that you know now, feeders play a very important role. Example, I've shown you the Reuters. You have both feeders, which is Reuters and Bloomberg. And I think majority of the market is covered by covered by them. We have few other feeders. They are not much to be. Feeders give the live information. Like I showed you, the Reuters is giving the live information. Reuters Messenger is there. Bloomberg is there. Reuters, Bloomberg Messenger is there. It helps covering the live trade plus the chatting piece of it. That is really very important. Majority of the people across the globe do on the Reuters messenger Example But the real threat to the treasury world is the automation Currently there are four kind of automations which are happening number one is the artificial intelligence Artificial intelligence is really killing the front office even in Singapore many front office people are asked to step down or they asked to take reduced salary because the artificial the algorithmic trading is taking over 
robo advisory is hitting the investment professionals very hard and especially in the big banks because the computer is deciding i understand in this covid 19 the robo advisor faced lockdowns and a lot of issues which not reported in the media in crypto segment the app trading is getting highly popular unfortunately there are few pros and cons with the apps which people do not want it to understand fourth is the blockchain all the fx products are slowly slowly coming to the blockchain to be very honest artificial intelligence robo advisory app trading blockchain they are all killing the financial markets according to bloomberg around very closer to 500k jobs which is around half of a million jobs is cut in us and europe between 2014 to 2020 which is six years god knows how much in 2021 but as i understand that the us banks are investing a very huge amount of money in terms of technology so it is really really difficult for all the banks to continue with the jobs that i really understand there are two options in treasury number one is definitely the degree culture which includes cfa i always call this certified financial analyst i know the bookish definition is the chartered financial analyst some people call this charter financial analyst when we have chartered accountant cpa american institute of cpa frm and thousands of degrees I have not said, I have not taken MBA. Having said that, I am also MBA because M, majority of the time, MBA is being taught only a topic. And I, they themselves do not know that after two years, they, they how come the two years passed and then they realized what they actually learned. The second way of entering treasury is definitely the knowledge culture. Choice is yours. You wanted to go ahead with the degree culture or the knowledge culture. But before I conclude, let me... This is what the treasury offices we are having. These are the asset classes we are having. This is how the desk are maintained. This is the sales department. This is fixed income. We have not covered all asset classes. Rest is covered in our courses. This is currencies. This is feeders. This is Auto, the issue of automation which is getting highly highly realistic now and this is the final thing before i conclude let me show you or give you a glimpse of thomson reuters example we speak on saturday you can see that the market is moving this is how we check everything this is the charts this is the indexes and so on and so forth there are so many things which we have People feel that treasury can only be covered by books or maximum lectures. No, treasury is impossible without Reuters or Bloomberg. And guys, I'm telling you that as we speak, like in 2014, no one predicted that the banks would be cutting around 500k jobs only in US and Europe in another six years, which is 2014 to 2016. I'm sure that by the time we connect maybe by 2025 this 500k might be 5 million maybe more than that because the covid 19 impact is huge on the bank books and since it is huge banks needs to have some savings and from where the banks will get savings that is definitely the jobs so guys we really need to understand this concept very well treasury is getting very vast and it would continue to get vast this is Rahul from Treasury Consulting. Our details and everything is there at the end of the video. Have a great time ahead, sir. Thank you very much.